Welcome to another episode of Donversations. Today is my first video episode and I'm here with Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you so much for being my guinea pig, for being my first video. Um, we are going to be talking about tapping today. And so it's perfect to have a visual for people that are actually watching the video, um, but we'll try and make it user friendly for people that are listening as well. But um, Nancy, welcome. Tell me about tapping. What got you into it? What got you to learn about it? Well, I used to, well, for many years, I was a therapist and I went to a training for working with people who were struggling with, with um, I won't even go into it. I don't want to traumatize anyone, but it was, it was a big deal for two days. Halfway through the second day, this internationally renowned guy says to the whole conference room, okay, if you're going to work with this population, you really should have this technique in your toolbox. I'd never heard of it before. This EFT, emotional freedom techniques. And he had us go through the process, a very quick tapping process on anything we chose for 20 minutes. And they said, okay, on to the rest of it. And he'd had a, a, a link on his slide to go learn some more, a 40 page PDF. Went home that night. I read it. I thought, that's kind of weird, but okay. If, if he says it, then it must be interesting. And the next day I offered to one of my therapy clients, uh, Hey, do you want to try this? Uh, this weird thing. I just found out about it and he was game. So I had him pick a memory and he picked one from when he was 12. I said, okay, so sitting here today, what are you feeling when you think about that memory now? He said, well, I'm anxious. Okay. Zero to 10. How anxious? I'm an eight. And uh, I mean, I, he probably was a nine. He was gripping the arms of the armchair so hard. I thought, I thought he was going to poke holes in it. So oh my God. with all, a 40 page PDF and 20 minutes to have you with the day before, I took my client through a single round of tapping on that memory. And when we got done, I looked at him and I said, okay, same memory, same zero, zero to 10 scale. How anxious are you now? And I expected him to say, Nancy, I'm an eight. Can we do some real therapy here? But instead he looked off in the dis distance and went, yeah, it's just a memory. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. happened to me in all my years of doing therapy with clients before. And so I knew there was something I had to, to uh, you know, find out about this. So that was the start of it. So what is it? Is it like um, the acupuncture points? Is that what you're tapping? Exactly. Um, now, acupuncture has, I don't know, 200, 400 points or something like that. There is around, I don't know, 17, 19 points that people will use and just uh, some regular ones, even fewer than that, that you use for tapping. But these are points on those um, what are called energy meridians uh, that come near the surface. Energy meridians are, are kind of lines of energy that run through the body, according to Chinese medicine. Um, and in fact, Western science has now found a way to measure that and find that they really are there uh, physically. Anyway, at the points where these, these lines come near the surface, that's where we do some tapping. So there's quite a few on the face, there's quite a few on the hands, and there's a few on the top of the head and the, the body. Um, and, and they're all over, but most of the tapping is done hand, face, and a little bit on the body. Um, and the Western science tells us that when you use the needle for ac acupuncture, or if you tap or rub them, you get a result in it that it's, it sends a message in effect to the amygdala, the, the, the mid part of your brain of safety and calm. And so that's been used in a number of different ways, uh, in a number of different arenas to help people make change. Um, in, in the therapy world, it's great for things like phobias and post-traumatic stress disorder and all that. Um, and then it's, you'll, you'll see it in, psych, in sports, sports psychology. You'll, you'll see people in the dugout tapping away before they get up to bat or before they take their swing on the golf course. Um, so that's made a big inroad there. I use it with women entrepreneurs to get rid of the subconscious rules and beliefs and fears that have been holding them back from growing their business. So I, I talk about mindset, visibility, and profitability. Profitability is like all things money. Visibility right. is like standing up and being seen, growing your audience. And then mindset is, is pretty much everything else, but a, a lot of the time that's talking about things like uh, pushing yourself to work too hard or not hiring, not letting yourself have support, things like that. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask. Are there 
Is there a common theme for women entrepreneurs um, that oh, you notice? Yeah, there, there are so many common blocks that women have. Now, men have blocks too, and I've worked with some men, but I've really focused on women um, because the themes come up around uh, having to look a certain way before you can be seen, you know, um, having to not make waves, don't, don't, don't speak up, no one wants to listen to me, don't be, uh, no one will see me as an expert. Things that I think are more specific to women than they mm -hmm. are to men. And then women have just a ton of blocks around making more money, or if they do make the money, spending it. So oh. sometimes they, they spend it as fast as it comes in because they're not supposed to have it. But sometimes they, they can't seem to spend it. It's a really interesting thing. And sometimes the same block leads to the opposite results in people. So Yeah, that's super interesting. So are people supposed to do the tapping as it's happening, whatever's triggering them? Or is it something that they can do, like, say they know they've got a big presentation at noon, they could do it in the morning before they go to work, they could start tapping or how does sure. it work? Well, you can do it any way you want to. Um, what I, I will sometimes teach people who are going to go do a, a talk or, or have a conversation where they, they are really stressed out about it. I'll teach them this sort of the move to uh, get themselves to be uh, calm using these tapping points that are very subtle. So I'm, I'm showing you here, you take the thumb and you put it on the side of your index finger and you just make little circles there. And then you put that down on your side and who's gonna see you, especially if you're on Zoom. Right, that's right. sending that message of safety and calm. And you can do that um, at any point. But for me, the idea is if I can get, get out the thing, the, the message that is causing someone to freak out about giving their talk, then I want to do that beforehand so that right. they can focus on more important things when they go up there. So, so yeah, I mean, if you're doing it on your own, you can do it beforehand. I've had people who say, yeah, I went to the bathroom so that I could tap and no one would see me. And then I came out and I was fine. So, yeah. <laughs> So if you have like a bad memory, something terrible that happened in your childhood, is the tapping of getting rid of it? Well, it's not like it's, it's giving you amnesia. You're going to remember what happened. But if you're working on something uh, from the past, a memory and releasing the emotions around it, then it can be like my client who said, oh, it's just a memory. It went from being something he was living through even years and years later to something that you could look back on and say, oh yeah, that happened. It wasn't great, but it's not triggering me now. Yeah, it's so interesting too how our mind works because um, we can be living in the fight or flight way because yeah. it, it feels like, because we're thinking about it, that it's happening right then. Like it can make your heart race or it can make you have a pit in your stomach, just like mm -hmm. it's recent or happening right now, current, when it's something that happened 10 years ago. It's so interesting how the brain can recollect like that and how it can affect your whole body. Yeah, there was just an article in the Times a few weeks back about how they're, they're discovering that different parts of the brain are involved in those kind of traumatic memories. So yeah, it is like you're, you're reliving it in, as opposed to remembering it with a normal memory. Yeah. Okay. And so you said you mainly work with women, like entrepreneurs. Um, do, do you use the same, same techniques on women as you do with men? Do, do men and oh. women's brains respond the same with tapping and EFT? Yes. Yeah. I, 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 the tapping points are the same no matter what. Um, and the, the difference I have found is that women have these common blocks. So as I specialize in, I'm, I'm more likely to see them. And, and help these women be able to, to surface them and, and release them together with the tapping. Men, I have worked with men, and I just simply don't have that same expertise, I would say now. I, you know, I think that there's a lot of common blocks that men have too, uh, along with the women, but there's some specific ones that women have because of the way we were raised, because of the, the, the socializing we were given. Mm -hmm. um, we have to take care of everybody. We have to make sure everybody's happy. And that can get in the way of hiring right there, for example. Right. Um, and men don't really have that. Um, at least most men, I, I shouldn't say all men, most men haven't had that same kind of uh, socializing. And, and this is what you're responsible for. 
that, that the women have. Now men have their own issues and, and, you know, some wonderful men I've worked with needed to release some things. But right. I think the reason I'm doing it this way is simply because that way I can become more of an expert in the population and what they need, if that makes sense. Well, I, it does make sense. Um, and I had asked Nancy if she would help me. Um, we, she likes to do a little session before going on a podcast, which I think is just awesome that you're willing to do that, take the time, you know, and so we did that last week. And you really get down, down, down. It's not surface level. I mean, um, we really were, we were talking for at least 20 minutes to really get down to more of a root cause of my fear of being exposed on the internet and being vulnerable and putting myself out there. And so that's why it was just perfect for her to be my first guest to do this. But I just found the whole process so interesting. I've never personally gone to a therapist or gone to therapy, but that's what I felt like it would be like. Um, just really making me sit and think, sit with my thoughts and think about why I feel the way I feel and what brought on those beliefs. That whole belief system thing is so intriguing to me. So is that what usually gets people beliefs that they've had about themselves since they were little? Yeah, that that is actually what I found to be almost always the thing that's getting in the way of the women who come to me because they want to make more money or they want to have have more clients or whatever it is they come for. When we go digging down, what comes up is something they internalized in the past, usually in childhood, sometimes a bit later. But it's it's a rule that was meant at the time to keep them safe, to keep them part of their family, to keep them fitting in a part of the tribe so that they're going to be loved and cared for. And so I, I never get upset that, well, what do you, why would you have that kind of rule? Because it makes perfect sense that they internalize that rule at the time. It's just, mm -hmm. it no longer serves them. And so by bringing that up, we can tap and then release it. And the fact that I, I work with so many women, it's like, I, I usually know at least the realm in which their blocks are like, oh yeah, this is probably something around. It's not safe to be seen, or it's something around. I have to take care of everyone or, you know, something like that. And then we can come up with the rules and I have them break them and then they'll see it. And I've had people who had these rules, subconscious rules that they totally disagreed with in, in consciously. Um, that like one example is I had a woman who's, who was lesbian. She was married uh, to her wife and, I had, she was having trouble making more money. And I had her say, well, I'm supposed to be taken care of by a man. And she's like, oh, come on. But I had her say it and she rated it and it was really high for her. <laughs> she's like, oh. I haven't believed this. I don't think ever, but certainly since I was a teenager, cause I knew that wasn't going to happen. Why is it still in my subconscious? But that was the rule she was given as a little kid. And so it was still rattling around, getting in the way of her making more money. So, wow, yeah. that is so interesting. I bet every single session is just so mind blowing, the stuff that you can pull out of people. And then just knowing that afterwards they're feeling so much better and lighter and um, that you're removing those blocks that, that are supposed to be in your mind's eye protecting you, but yeah. that's actually stopping you. It's stopping you from living. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would and, love to do just a little mini session if we could, just for the listeners. Um, you know, I, I don't know, is it com is stress just the most common one that you usually deal with or is that yeah, a good place to uh, start? stress is an easy one for people to try out a little bit of tapping because most people have some stress. Um, and coming off of the holiday season, probably people are pretty, you know, like, oh no, now I have to get back into it and they're stressed about that. So stress is a good one. Um so why don't I just take you through it and, and you can take it for real and everyone listening can do what, what I have you do. And, and okay. then I'll try some tapping. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is rate your stress. So just you know, don't, don't make it worse, but just notice how stressed you feel right now on a scale of zero to hundred percent. And you might feel it physically in your body, or you maybe just feel it emotionally, but how stressed do you feel? Zero is none at all. hundred percent would be probably you wouldn't be able to do do this recording. Right. Yeah. I would say I'm at 50 just because I was so nervous about doing this. Otherwise, okay. you know, stress. <laughs> I've got some stresses in my life, but no, I would say half. Okay. 50. 
All right, so stress at 50. Um, and I'm just going to do it really simple at first uh, for the tapping part. But in case we get to do a little bit more, let me ask you, do you feel that stress anywhere in your body? Usually when I'm stressed, it's in my shoulders. So I would say that's probably where it is, right? In like um, the base of my neck in between my shoulder blades. And that's where you feel it right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're going to start out with the simplest tapping there is. It's just call it aspirin tapping, but hey, if you've got a headache, an aspirin feels so good. So <laughs> we're going to tap. And for those people who are, are uh, watching, um, you'll just tap where I tap. Uh, and Don, you'll tap along with me. Okay. I'll say something and you'll repeat it back. So you're going to be tapping about as hard as if you were drumming your fingertips on a tabletop. Uh, so not whiffing it, but don't leave a bruise either. Okay. It's just solid. <laughs> and for anyone who's listening, I will, tr I will let you know where the spot is. You're going to be tapping with a couple of fingers, except when you get to your collarbone, where you're going to be using the flat part of your knuckles where a man would not his tie. And then under your arm, just use all four fingers, right? About where a bra strap goes. And then the very top of the head, all five fingers. So the, okay. okay. Yep. You ready to try this? I'm ready. All right. I have to remind myself to be simple because I always want to get into all the, the stuff, but we're going to keep it very simple. So tapping on the side of your hand under your little finger between the knuckle and the wrist, there's that fleshy part there. So tap there and repeat after me. Even though I have this stress. Even though I have this stress. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. So even though I'm feeling stress. Even though I'm feeling stressed. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm feeling stressed. Even though I'm feeling stressed. I deeply and completely accept myself. Deeply and completely accept myself. Now with those two fingers, tap on where one of your eyebrows starts. This stress. This stress. Now the side of your eye, that rigid bone, the eye socket. This stress. This stress. About an inch below your pupil. This stress. This stress. Between your nose and your lip, this stress. This stress. That line on your chin, this stress. This stress. Now make that fist and with the flat of your knuckles, go where a man would not as high. This stress. This stress. Under your arm, this stress. This stress. And the top of your head, this stress. This stress. Okay, take a deep breath in and out again. All right, so that was, a, it's a little bit, um, we're going back and forth between learning the points and using them, but let's just see. So same, same things going on in your life. How much stress are you feeling now, Don? Zero to 100%. Um, it's a little less. My dog okay. is panting right now. <laughs> so that's kind of annoying me. So I think I'm picking up on that and I'm not um, relaxing as much as I could, but um, I definitely feel better. Okay. All we did was do that, all the tapping points and kept your, your mind focused on the stress. The, the, the ma there's not really magic in the words. Uh, the words are simply to keep your, the top of your brain focused on what you want the tapping to work on instead okay. of, I don't know, the, what the dog is doing, what, what goes on the grocery list. Um, you know, that's, that's where our mind will go for just tapping. So, so did that make sense? Yeah, it does. So the, the tapping is the point of it to bring you into the present more than anything. Is that hmm. because you're, you're focusing on something, not your problem? I had not ever heard of it that way. And it, it's not the way I think of it. What I think the tapping does is whatever you bring up, it could be something in the present, like the stress, but it could also be something from your pa a past memory, a difficult time. And you bring it up uh, to the forefront of your consciousness. And while you're tapping, you're sending that message of safety and calm to your brain, okay. which would ordinarily be a little bit riled up or maybe mm -hmm. a lot riled up from whatever it is, whether it's the present or it's the memory. Mm -hmm. And then what, how I see it is that by sending in that message of safety and calm, you are disconnecting the trigger, uh, the memory say from the reaction, the, the stress. Okay. And when you've disconnected it, they don't just automatically go back together. If you've, if you've completely disconnected it, then you can go about your business and you're not going to have that same trigger lead to the same reaction. 
uh, not unless you know something else happens. I've I've heard of people who had a, a phobia, say a, a fear of snakes, um, and they tapped on the uh, the event that caused it if there was an event, and it went away. But then you know if they, you run across another rattlesnake, <laughs> you might actually develop it again. But ordinarily, right. no, it's gone. So. Oh wow, that's so interesting. I love that. Well, so if somebody wanted to seek you out and find your assistance, how can they find you? Well, they can find me on the internet, unblockresults.com, U-N-B-L-O-C-K-R-E-S-U-L-T-S.com. And if they want to, I brought, I brought a gift because I, I always want to bring a gift when I have an opportunity <laughs> to talk to somebody. Um, so for your listeners, if they go to unblockresults.com slash Dawn, D-A-W-N, they can get my quiz. It's a quiz for women entrepreneurs to see where they might have those blocks, whether it's mindset, visibility, or, or profitability. And then once you've taken the quiz, you get access to a tap long video in each one of those areas, mindset, visibility, and profitability for a common block. One of the com most common blocks I found in each one of those three areas. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. So what's next for you? Do you have like um, things that you're aspiring to do yet? Or are you happy where you're at? Oh, there's always more. Um, but <laughs> I'll tell you this year, I have created uh, a uh, four events, which I have have rolled out. And next year, I'm going to do do them again, only a, even better. But the, the, the next thing for next year, the big one is I've been working on a book. So I knock wood, I will have it done. I've got a first draft manuscript, but it needs a lot of work. For um, 2024, for, right? For 2024, that is the awesome. plan. So, That's a big deal. Writing a book yeah. is a huge deal. So kudos to you. That's awesome. That's a lot. Yes, it was bigger than I expected. I thought, oh, I'll just get it written. You know, I'll just, you know, sit down and get it done every hour or so, you know, an hour a week or something. No, it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. I'm excited for you. And maybe when uh, when you get it done and you want to promote it, you can come back and you can talk about it. I would love My to have pleasure. you back. Yeah, I, I really appreciated everything that you did for me, trying to help me get out of my head and my fears and all that stuff and being my very first guest on uh, on video. So thank you, Nancy, so much for your time. I really appreciate you doing that. Well, thank you, Don, And congratulations on doing your first video. <laughs> All right, Nancy, we'll be in touch. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.